St. Barnabas. St. Barnabas the Apostle. He uh, was born in Cyprus, which is um, the island off of Greece. Born into a Jewish family, grew up Jewish, one of the diaspora, which refers to all of those Jews who do not live in Israel, but are scattered about the world, the known world, the diaspora. Uh, so uh, was Saul of Tarsus. He was one of the diaspora, born in, in Tarsus, which is uh, Turkey, which is actually, there would be shipping routes between Cyprus and Tarsus. So uh, uh, when Paul went through his conversion experience, Barnabas had already become one of those Jews who embraced Jesus as the Messiah. And he was familiar with the Jewish community, the, the Christians, Jews in Jerusalem, like the apostles and that first wave of Christianity. He was familiar with them. He was actually a part of that from out of town, if you will, but, but he was there with them to learn with them about Jesus. And he may have been part of that original retinue of Jesus, but wasn't one of the original 12 chosen. So he may have met Jesus, we're unclear on that. But when Saul went through his conversion experience, Barnabas took Saul under his wing and introduced him to the, the apostles in Jerusalem, because they were skittish about him for obvious reasons, because Saul had been a violent persecutor of the, of the way, the, this new Christian movement. Uh, that the apostles, of course, were promoting. So. so they were nervous about him, but Barnabas, you know, picked up on Saul, Paul, now Paul, right away and supported him. And then uh, they were sent on mission, what we refer to as Paul's first uh, journey, first uh, evangelizing mission, and went to Antioch. And uh, they, in fact, uh, Barnabas brought Paul into that because Barnabas had gone there first and then went and got Paul, as we heard, from Tarsus. And they worked together for a year there. So they were collaborators and uh, they were very dear to each other. And then that's where we hear today, even in Antioch, where we were first called Christians, then they were prayed over and sent to the Gentiles. So that's, Barnabas was part of that first outreach to the Gentiles. So they, they were collaborators, and it's important to know that. But it's also important to know this, I think, that, that the conflict between Paul and Barnabas arose when probably on one of those missionary journeys, Barnabas' cousin, John Mark, uh, must have uh, got f afraid of the persecution they were experiencing because they were getting beat up all the time. Remember, Paul was constantly stories of his being stoned and them being cast out or being mistaken for uh, gods, the Greek gods, because they could see miracles at their hands. So they, th those who were of, the, of those pagan religions, they just assumed these were the pagan gods. Come to earth, and they had to, uh, the people were upset about that. They were cast out of Jewish synagogues. They were um, cast out of towns from uh, pagans because they thought, if you're stealing, uh, you know, drawing people to your religion, you're taking them away from ours. This is going to hurt us. And so they were very controversial figures. And it's understandable that some of those on that mission would get nervous and abandon the task. And that's what John Mark did probably because he was a cousin. Barnabas wanted to give him another chance. Paul was done with him. He didn't want him on a, a next journey mission. And they, it was, they argued about it. And they went separate ways. They went separate ways for a while. They were still working for the, for the same purpose, the same mission of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they couldn't get along. Now, I think this is important to, to remember because they, they were about the same purpose. They had their own uh, personal conflicts. And the scriptures usually don't, they, I mean, when, we, when they write about that, it's like St. Luke wrote about that, or when the gospels show the apostles acting poorly, why would they put something in there that would be an embarrassment to the community? But because they want to be honest. I mean, when you, when you see something, scripture scholars use that as an analysis. They say, how can we tell this actually happened? Well, they wouldn't write about it if it didn't happen when it's something that's embarrassing <laughs> or awkward. So, so uh, that conflict was real. But they reconciled. And I think that's important because uh, to think that, well, if we're all church, that means we all get along perfectly. 
No, no. It's like saying, well, since we're all in the same family and we love each other, we will always get along perfectly, right? No, of course not. That's just part of the human condition. But it also means we're meant to reconcile. We're, went, we're meant to see that our love is bigger than the problem and to find our way to reconciliation, as Paul and Barnabas did. I think that's important to remember uh, because we still have, obviously, conflicts in our church. There are a lot of different opinions about there about how you're supposed to be Catholic and these people aren't really Catholic. Well, no, we are, but you aren't. And uh, You know, that's going to happen. But the goal is to recognize we're working for the same purpose and for Christ and proclaiming his gospel and that we're called to reconcile and always keep those lines of communication open. I think that's a great witness for us as, as Christians to see that in the part of the apostles, then it helps us to remember, well, God will give us what we need as well, that we may love in such a great way that it sees beyond our differences, still acknowledging differences perhaps, but finding ways to reconcile.